Okay, well we have our uh, center line for our bearing blocks established and the height, so uh, we can take our string off of here for now. Now this has a shoulder on the back side of it, a male pilot that goes into the stern tube. So we should be able to use that to register this back up straight again. Uh, depending on whether we replace this stuffing box with a different one or not, um, we will just have the shafts in place and this will just be floating on there at first and then we'll get the, the shaft aligned and everything from the cutlass bearing to the main, get the bearing blocks, or uh, get the bearings locked down on the bearing blocks and everything dial indicated. And then this will be the final part where we just redrill these holes and and, uh, and mount that. So obviously we'll have to be dry when we do this, either in the yard or on the grid and have enough time to accomplish it all. So we'll see how that goes. Um, for now though, we can take this off. So for those of you that just joining us, um, this is the actual part that seals the salt water, the sea water um, out from the inside of the vessel. It's, uh, there's packing that goes in here and this collar compresses it around the shaft, creating a watertight seal. Um, we are in the water right now, but we have a plate on the outside of the boat where the propeller exited the keel. And if you want to see that process of us removing the propeller shaft and the prop and the propeller shaft and blanking that over. Yeah, we'll throw a link down below for it. Shows us basically building a tool to pull the prop, also putting that tool to use, cleaning the bottom of the boat, all that kind of good stuff that yep. you do on the grid. Pulling the propeller off the shaft and then pulling the shaft out and sealing off the hole in the keel where the propeller shaft exits the shaft tube. So our goal here is that we're going to remove this. We're going to build up this glass right here on the face, solid glass. Uh, get a nice good surface for this to go back up against and um, in the event that we ever replace this bulkhead or anything then we can remove all that material right up to this fresh layer of glass that we've made and then build it back again on the outside. So that's, uh, that's what's going on here. <laughs> Plus we've gone through this whole running gear assembly so it would make no sense at all not to come in here and remove this and at the very least repack it make sure that it's sealed well and everything but oh, spinning out <laughs> yeah i don't know if they're just legs on the other side or not we're gonna find out here in a minute i'm assuming that they probably are but oh no that's coming out oh oh i got you spinning spinning yeah uh-huh. Hmm. Get a hammer and get on the back side of it. And I don't know what's going on down here. That was just a big old mouse right there. That bottom one. A bunch of rust and crust or what we got going on there, but that's ugly. Yep. And that's why we're going through this, folks. Uh, yeah, like Dad said, this seals the seawater out, so you want it to be uh, <laughs> structurally sound and, you know. This is one of those extremely important components. Yep. Maybe not the most vital part of a fishing vessel, but definitely high on the list.
Not sure if I got low enough on that, but we'll see here. I'm guessing I didn't. Don't want to beat up your plate, huh? Nah, I'd rather keep it as nice as possible. It is a washer in there, isn't it? Mm or not. Yeah, that uh, sealant isn't doing much anymore, I reckon. No, I don't think so, huh? Not now, anyways. Probably just more like a gasket being compressed in there, huh? Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah, so there's a shoulder on this that normally would like go over a stern tube or butt up against it I don't know a lot of grease in there hard to tell if we got much wear maybe a little bit on the top looks pretty good though so it must have been centered in there somewhat well um, yeah <laughs> okay that's gross not safe for work warning <laughs> Little layer of grease. Yeah. Have to tape some cardboard to that wall or something and scoop that stuff out of there, huh? Yeah. Try not to make a giant mess. So it would be nice to upgrade. Uh, as we were saying, you can see how much this uh, this flange is distorted right there. That's from over tightening it. They probably ran out of packing or something. Didn't have the correct amount of packing in there and they were torquing down on it to keep it from leaking. Damaging that in the process. Those are actually pretty expensive to replace too. Yeah, so now that that's out, we'll get these studs out of the way. We'll go ahead and double nut them and see if we can pull those out. Um, see exactly what is holding them in. It could be that they just bored it out and filled it with epoxy or polyester resin and then uh, and then just bedded the, the threads into there. I don't know, we'll see here in a minute. I doubt that there's a plate back in there. like a giant pad of Bondo. Uh, it's not really the way to do things. No, I 
it's not. Bondo is not very good stuff when it comes to an important thing like this. Like structurally, Bondo is just weak. At least if you use a structural putty with with fillers, milled fibers in it, you get some strength out of it, but not the stuff. Let's see what they got going on here. It might be the stern tube splitting around. Nope. I just want to go in, in here slow because there's a, it's a fiberglass tube. It's called a stern tube. I don't really want to damage it too much. The goal is to tie back into it. That might be a piece of it right there. to use that to build up this uh, ID on this for that shoulder of that to fit in there properly. Yep. And I think I might be getting this wood here. It looks like it would be wood. That's wood. Okay. Well, so that's why we're going to lay this up because we know that there's wood behind here. This is probably short from this patch right here that's cut out. You can kind of tell by the darkness in here that that's wood. Um, it's probably got some oil soaked into it because fuel tanks are back there. Years of leaking, even just a few drops will wick into plywood like that and pretty much saturate it. And the plan is for all this stuff to go away in the next few years. Uh, we're going to raise up the back deck and it'll probably be coming off of this bulkhead or the one past it, but most likely this will all get tore out. So. That's basically why we're planning for the future and we're going to lay up essentially a new bulkhead right inside of this and then we can tear out all this rotten stuff and tie it back into the hull on the other side when we're done. So we're going to dig around here and I guess we'll probably bring you guys back after we get in there and figure it out. Um, like I say, I'm not really prone to rush into things really fast because if you make a mistake then it might be harder to fix it. So we'll just kind of dig into the slow and see what's going on, huh? Yep. Grease booger. I don't know how we're going to clean this stuff up, dude. Is it easier just to glass up a new tube and slide it in there? Yeah. Alright, everyone. Well, that was quite mild. But a little bit left back in there. we we'll have to get it all out of there somehow, but i got a couple ideas. Grody. Thick. Sticky. I, I think the key to get it out of there, but not introduce a bunch of liquid right now because we don't want to get our area all dirty down in there with grease. Yeah, we'll have to get it get it cleaned out as best as we can, and then we can spray some cleaner back in there and, uh, and muck it out real good. Yeah. And decide what to do. I think that was probably uh, a few tubes of grease there scooped out of there. Need a 
-hmm. Quarter inch glass. Yep. Inch so and a half of wood. Inch and a half, I'd say probably the same as before. Two sheets of three quarter, huh? Yep. Um, I'm guessing I might have just started hitting fiberglass on the back side where it's tabbed. At least we know how deep it goes so we can basically just put a mark on here about an inch and a half and you know not to exceed that. So. grossness. <clears throat> That's why we tabbed in like we did, and we're just laying this up, and uh, be able to just tear this back. Well, what we could always do, if it proves easier, is just cut a square out and yeah, do the foam thing. Same as up forward. This is still going to have to be addressed regardless. Yep. think it's better to cut a hole to cut a block out of it and see what's going on or so just finish through there maybe you'll see concrete maybe you'll see a void aha I was right I knew it was gonna be a carriage bolt called it Hmm. Yeah, look at that. Eating into it. So meanwhile, uh, yeah, just kind of tearing the stuff out. I was kind of concerned about knocking off these registration points. I'm not going to now. I'm just going to go ahead and tear it out of there. And uh, Pretty, uh, pretty weird layup. I think really resin rich. Whatever they did in here, you can see where the original was and they added some stuff on here. So we'll just drive a wedge underneath there. We should be able to peel that off the chunk. Honestly, I'm already feeling better about digging into this some, uh, Matt. Yeah. I've dug out a massive Bondo plug in here. Maybe they fitted it in place and then they ended up putting this bulkhead slightly further ahead. I don't really know. Now the stern tube is actually pretty big. I think it's a four inch maybe by the looks of it. So we should be seeing it right, right in here somewhere. Yeah, 
I'm guessing that is part of it right there. And that is going to be, I don't know what that's going to be. Okay, we're close. I'm just going to, just going to dig in here real softly. I don't want to damage that tube. Yeah, we'll get this whole back part cleaned up. It's fiberglass. Uh, maybe kind of see this stern tube right there. That kind of amber looking color as part of the stern tube. You can see how it's rounded, dropping in there a little bit. So we'll, we'll take out this little portion here in the front and then we'll just start cleaning up around that real carefully. Filler. <laughs> we just left a pretty wide kind of flange on this yesterday when we cut it open. Just kind of wanted to get in there and check it out. I'll try not to go too deep. Um, so I just retrimmed it this morning, pretty close to the hull, but this is just tabbing that we're cutting through. Um, this pinkish stuff right here, this is just putty. So the actual hull is still like right there, down a little bit. So a lot of this stuff will chip out and then we'll come in here and we'll just knock this down a little bit. We do have a little bit of seepage coming through. Hopefully it's not too much of a problem, but if we mix it up hot, we get that all cleaned up, we should be fine. This is most likely, it's just moisture coming out of this bulkhead. It's had nowhere to go all this time, now it does. Uh, getting this shaft tube cleaned up, you can kind of see it now. Um, all this massive amount of putty and, and resin around it, so we'll get that cleaned up and then as we start to build up these layers, we'll tie it into this and we'll get a real strong, good bond again. And then we'll just extend it out a little bit as far as we need to. Uh, we got the wood all tore out uh, down, to the, down to the hole here. So this is the, this is the actual hole. If you drilled through that, you'd have salt water squirting in. Um, you can see they're quite generous with some kind of putty or thickened resin or something right there. It's um, not Bondo. It has the color of Bondo, but it's just pretty much straight resin. Yeah. It felt like chips off like resin. And We've got our, our stern tube is, is cleaned up some. It's looking better. It was kind of a big glumpy mess too. It's a little bit of moisture in here, not too much. Um, these, these plywood walls, they're just saturated and, you know, honestly guys, this is nothing that's like out of the ordinary for a commercial fishing vessel or any vessel for that matter. If you go find a boat anywhere in the U.S. about this age, you're going to have similar um, conditions like this. Yep. It's well, not like rotten from the inside out or anything. No. It's not going to collapse under our feet. Yeah, this is a fiberglass hull, so... We keep getting comments that why would you buy a wood boat? It's not a wood boat, it's a fiberglass hull. But back in the day, this is what you used for bulkheads. You used plywood mm -hmm. or wood of some sort. Um, we didn't have good structural foams back then and nobody was doing laminates like this back then. But this is the way to go now. Closed cell foam that doesn't absorb water. Um, it doesn't wick water like plywood does. Mm -hmm. It'll wick it between the layers. And after 40 years, this is just what you end up with. There's really nothing like, oh my God, you guys bought a rotten boat. They're all the same way. Um, some in a lot worse shape. Mm -hmm. Like you can go through the harbor and you can, 
The best place to look and see the condition of a fishing vessel is look at their mast step and see how much their deck is sagged right there. Because <laughs> that's usually the first place that it's going to happen. Because yep. number one, it's a huge pain to lift a mast and work on that area and reseal it. So generally it doesn't get done until it's has to until, be done. Uh, until it becomes a until big it's ready problem. Until like fail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's boats, you know, that it, it leaks on their main engines and stuff. And yeah. I got this pretty well cleaned up up here. I just uh, I'll finished cutting out the last little chunks of stuff out of the way. I took a hole saw and just kind of chewed that stuff out some last night, just dropped it down a little bit. Um, I might need to hit a little bit more on this side, but it'll just allow me to kind of tie into both sides of this and then we'll overlap it again. It's not a real big deal, but we'll just seal off that junk down there. Got this all tightened up last night. Already looking a lot better. I had one little spot where some water tried to leak through, but no big deal. You see it's still a little moist. Pretty much dried out now, so I'll give it a day or two and go over that, but we'll be able to cap that off now. All right. So dad just glued that piece of foam you see there in. It's just a 45 to take up that corner. Right here. And as well as the bottom piece there. A little 45 up here to mellow that transition. Yeah. Give us something to go off of once we bust out that aft bulkhead eventually. It's amazing how much better this looks already. Yeah. A little bit of putty. Yeah, we mix it up hot so that uh, any water that's there won't disturb it before it cures. So. Yeah, hopefully it'll kick off and off. be good. Smooth out the edges. 